For more on this situation, we turn now to our guest, Lieutenant Colonel Alan West, the chairman of the Texas Republican Party. So, Lieutenant Colonel, when we look about this situation, right now the focus is in Kenosha, Wisconsin. That's the latest event of really what is prompting protests and prompting the conversation about police reforms in this country. So I just want to get your response to what you're seeing right now in Kenosha. Well, without a doubt, it's good to be with you, Alex. You can have uh, bad members of any profession. You can have bad journalists. You can have bad soldiers. You can have bad police officers. But I think when you try to condemn the entire police force of that entire profession all across the United States of America, that is where we see the disconnect between what the progressive socialist left is doing and really the law and order that we want on our streets. So those individuals will have an investigation. We will see whether or not uh, they acted properly and conducted themselves in the proper man manage manner according to their uh, procedures there. Just the same as we saw in Minneapolis, those four police officers have been charged. They're waiting for their day in court. But where are all of these Black Lives Matter protests every single weekend when we have hundreds of shootings in Chicago and many of the urban uh, population centers all across the country? They are cherry picking based upon their ideological agenda when they want to riot, when they want to protest. And it's unfortunate, too, that this issue has become politicized. I mean, you and I have actually talked before about the idea that there was a chance of very legitimate police reforms being passed through Congress. I mean, the mm -hmm. Republican Senate uh, had their proposal. The Democrat House had their proposal. And really, the only hurdle was over the issue of qualified immunity. But if you were to take out that disagreement, that would have been something that Democrats in the past would have championed when it came to police reforms. There was an opportunity for progress. Do you fear that because this is an election year that that progress is being stalled? Well, of course, this is, like you said, been highly politicized, and it goes back to what Rahm Emanuel said, never let a good crisis go to waste. And that's how they see this, to try to stoke these uh, this hatred and this divisiveness that is out there on our streets. But it's going to work against them. For instance, here in Austin, Texas, just last week, we had the city council of Austin, very far left city council, decide that they are going to defund the police force there by $150 million and reappropriate uh, those funds to other social services services. The people there in Austin don't want to see their police force defunded, especially that they have seen a 60 percent increase in uh, violent crime. And now guess what's going to have to happen after this? They're going to see even more of an increase. So th what is happening in Kenosha, Wisconsin is isolated to there, isolated to those individuals. It is not something that is reflective all across the United States of America. Hmm. And when you talk about that violence, too, I think that's a good point that it is usually just a bad apple, as the media will say, or things of that. But what we're seeing now is that some of those concerns about really taking aim at the police are spreading beyond these communities as well. For example, we saw the McCloskeys uh, last night at the RNC, a couple who was forced to defend their home because protests entered a more suburban area. Police weren't responding to the violence at the time. Is this something that you think the American people are looking at and are saying, you know what, I, right now maybe Republicans are right when they say that the Democratic Party wants to take away our guns. They want to defund the police. Maybe we are left up to our own devices because nobody else is there to really support our, our, us defending ourselves. Do you think that is a message that resonates among Americans? It is an absolute message that resonates among Americans. What we are theming that here in Texas is that either you stand with the rule of law or you're going to be surrendering to the rule of the mob. And when you hear the left talking about abolishing ICE, defunding police, and we know that Kamala Harris has said that she will use executive orders to eliminate, undermine, and get rid of the Second Amendment, that's why you see so many people, to include suburban white women, going out and purchasing handguns. That's the largest demographic of handgun purchasers right now and also taking concealed carry uh, license classes. And I don't think that people are going out and purchasing handguns so that they can give them away to Joe Biden and Robert Francis O'Rourke in three to four months. And when you talk about that demographic, too, it was pivotal in 2018 for Democrats taking back the House. And that's really going to be a big demographic that Republicans are trying to win back right now. We hear President Trump talking about the suburbs. We hear other lawmakers talking about the suburbs, especially women in the suburbs. That could be the pivotal game changer come this November election. So that's going to be a demographic that I'm going to be keeping an eye on. And it's become evident that this is an issue that they do care about. But Lieutenant Colonel Allen West, I really appreciate you coming on tonight, breaking down this issue. Thank you. Thank you, Alex.